Chapter 41 Do You Really Adore Me? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Right after Yun Chujio threw the pillow in her hands, she regained her rationality. Come now. Why am I so impulsive? That pretty boy is not someone to be trifled with, isn't this the same as me signing my own death warrant? Yun Chujio raised her head, and just as she expected, she saw Di Baiming looking at her with a dark face. As for the pillow. Well, it had already been reduced to dust. Hey dark dot skin thing, do you want to die? Di Baiming took a few steps forward while he glared at Yun Chujio with a cold gleam in his eyes. Yun Chujio cursed in her heart. Doesn't this pretty boy turn hostile a little too quickly? He's so temperamental, he's basically schizophrenic. He was giggling over there like an idiot one moment ago, and he's pretending to be arrogant and aloof now. Since this pretty boy is so temperamental he would really kill me, right? Damn it, this is a murder case caused by a pillow. D. Baiming took a few steps forward again, and Yun Chujio felt the shadow of death covering her. What should I do? How should I deal with this? Yun Chujio's small face suddenly showed an expression of surprise and delight. Prince Charming. It's really you, Prince Charming. This is great. I thought I was dreaming just now. Prince Charming, I'm so fortunate to be able to see you again. I have to thank my ancestors now. D. Baiming's facial expression became softer. He frowned. Since you're so excited to see me, why did you throw the pillow at me? I, I. Yun Chujio's mind whirred as she tried her hardest to think of an excuse. Humph, two dot faced woman. Since you want to die so much, I'll help you. D. Baiming felt incredibly angry as he recalled the letter and phone previously gave him. Yun Chujio jumped down from the bed immediately, threw herself into D. Baiming's arms and held his waist. Prince Charming, A. Eh? Actually, ah. When I saw you coming so early in the morning, I knew that you must not have slept well, so I wanted to give you a pillow and let you have a good sleep. But I was a little embarrassed, best that so I ended up throwing the pillow at you. For a moment, D. Baiming said nothing, and did nothing. Yun Chujio's little heart raced. What's the meaning behind this? If he's not taking any action, I'm not either. If the pretty boy wants to kill me, I'll have no choice but to fight. His fatal acupuncture point is right in front of my eyes. At that time, it'll be a life and death struggle. At the moment Di Baiming was hugged by Yun Chujio. His mind went completely blank, as if an explosion went off in his head. What kind of feeling was that, you ask? Well, it was as if there were thousands of fireworks exploding in his mind at that moment. He had not expected this dark dot skinned, shabby dot looking thing to have such a soft and fragrant body. Not only did he not find her embrace repulsive, he even felt a little restless. At that moment, both Di Baiming and Yun Chujio thought about different things while holding each other quietly, and during that moment, someone came staggering in. Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord. Listen to me, the dark dot skin thing did not die, she did not. When Enfong saw what was happening in the room, he felt as if he had just taken a big step forward towards suicide. Ack. Supreme Lord, I did not see anything. I did not see you and dark dot skin thing hugging each other, begone. D. Baiming flung his sleeve, and the poor Enfong was sent flying out like a kite. D. Baiming took the chance to push Yun Chujio away. Dark dot skin thing, who gave you the permission to hug me? Do you want to die? Yun Chujio rolled her eyes in her heart. Can't you use something else aside from this? So uncivilized. While the girl continued making sarcastic quips in her heart, she put on an abashed expression. Prince Charming, I just can't help myself. If you think I have sullied your precious body, you can just smack me to death. D. Baiming cast a glance at Yun Chujio. Do you really adore me? Yun Chujio nodded as hard as a little chick pecking at grain. Yes. Of course. It's absolutely true. 
You're my Prince Charming. You're the sunshine in my heart. You're the source of my life. Chapter 42 Hi dot and dot mighty pretender you are listening at novel full dot audio. After D. Biming listened to Yun Chujio, he was most pleased. His lips curled up slightly, and he hummed softly. Yun Chujio cursed him secretly. Hum. Hum, my foot. You're just pretending to be high and mighty. Would you die if you talked more? Just what does the pretty boy mean by this? Is he intending to let me go? D. Biming took one step forward, and Yun Chujio was so nervous that it felt as if her little heart was going to jump straight out of her body. What does the pretty boy want? What does he want to do? Does he want to smack me to death? I already gave up my pride, and the pretty boy still wants to continue bothering me. Does he think I'm an easy target or what? Yun Chujio clenched her fists tightly while they remained hidden in her sleeves. As soon as Di Biming made any move, she was prepared to die fighting. Little did she expect Di Biming to walk and keep walking past Yun Chujio. Instead, he went straight to her bed. Dark dot skin thing, bring me a pillow. Di Biming took off his boots and coat, and he laid down on the bed. What? Yun Chujio stood like a silly mushroom. She could not figure out what Di Biming meant for a moment. D. Biming frowned. Didn't you say that I should have a good sleep? How can I sleep without a pillow? Or were they all lies? Hmm. Oh. Prince Charming, my bedding is kept by my maid, so I have trouble recalling where my pillows are kept. Yun Chujio was becoming more fluent in telling lies, and she wanted to take this opportunity to know whether her silly maid was still alive or dead. Hmph. You're so stupid. This room has only two cabinets, you just need to check them. Truly, you're so idiotic that your head must be empty. D. Biming put his hands behind his head while he mocked her in a relaxed manner. Yun Chujio felt so mad that she was about to die of anger because of this lunatic. This is M.Y. house. That is M.Y. bed. Who the heck are you calling stupid? You're the stupid one. You're stupid from head to toe, and even your hair is stupid. Yun Chujio scolded him from head to toe in her heart before she showed a flattering smile. Prince Charming, not only are you so good looking that nobody can beat you in terms of looks, you have remarkable foresight as well. Truly, I feel ashamed before you. D. Biming felt that the dark dot skin thing was really good at words. Although he always heard people flattering him, their words were too pretentious, unlike this dark dot skinned little thing in front of him. He could tell she really adored him. This dark dot skin thing was quite good. Yun Chujio found a pillow from her cabinet and went to stand in front of her bed in a servile manner. Prince Charming, here's the pillow. Di Baiming glanced at Yun Chujio before he pursed his lips. You look really ugly. Pretty boy, aren't you being really mean? Just you wait. A girl takes her sweet time for revenge. I will make you kneel down and submit to me one of these days. Yun Chujio took two deep breaths, and it was only then that she was able to suppress the raging storm in her heart. Yun Chujio spoke D. Biming in an obsequious manner, Prince Charming, please rest well. I will serve as your guard outside the door, and I promise you, I won't let even a single ant enter. D. Biming hummed in satisfaction. Then, he actually closed his eyes and fell asleep. Yun Chujio turned around and cursed him silently. Pretty boy, you bastard. Just sleep. It'd be good if you just continue sleeping until you die. When Yun Chujio walked out of the room, she saw Chun Yu laying on the floor, completely still. She could not help but feel her heart sink. Has Chun Yu been killed by the pretty boy? Yun Chujio walked close to see if Chun Yu was still breathing, and when she discovered that she was breathing in a very stable manner, she felt her heart relaxing. By the looks of it, she just fainted out of fear. Yun Chuyu thought for a while. Chun Yu is timid. 
If she wakes up and causes a ruckus, it'll be bad if she ends up angering the pretty boy. Therefore, Yun Chujio tapped Chun Yu's acupuncture points to make her sleep while she moved her to the couch outside the house. After that, Yun Chujio went outside the house and took a look at the deep pit in the courtyard. She then turned around, looked at the broken doors of the room, touched her own bald head, and thought about the pretty boy laying on her bed. She suddenly felt that her life was damn exciting. Chapter 43 your Supreme Lord is sleeping you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Chujio was gazing up at the sky. Her neck was craned at a beautiful 40.5 degree angle, a gloomy look on her face. Round the corner, someone snickered. Yun Chujio spun around. The source of snickering was the very person the pretty boy had sent flying. And Fong had been tremendously anxious. He had been worried that Di Baiming would punish him. That anxiety vanished when he saw the funny look on Yun Chujio's face. He could not help but laugh. Even the usually expressionless and Yin could not fight off the twitching of his mouth. Yun Chujio scolded them in her heart. Birds of a feather really flock together. The pretty boy's subordinates are no better than him. What are you laughing at? Have you never seen a bald person, or have you never seen such a beautiful bald head? Yun Chujio glared at An Fong fiercely. An Fong had grown used to Yun Chujio's erratic personality over the past few days, so he was not bothered. He asked curiously, Dark, Erm, Ninth Young Mistress, where is our Supreme Lord? An Fong had swallowed the words, Dark Dot Skinned Lass, that were already at the tip of his tongue. His Supreme Lord had already embraced the Dark Dot Skinned Lass so it was possible that this dark dot skinned lass would jump up the social ladder overnight. It was better for him to not offend her. He's sleeping. Both of you, don't linger around doing nothing either. Hurry up and fill up the deep pit for me. Yun Chujio put a hand behind her back and pointed at the deep pit in front with the other. After Yun Chujio finished talking, and Fong and An Yin both looked dumbfounded. She thought. Did I fail in pretending to be high and mighty, so I wasn't able to give orders to these two? What she did not know was that An Fong and An Yin were practically experiencing a baptism of their world views, moral views, and views in life. The Supreme Lord is sleeping in a lady's bed. Oh my goodness! This is breaking news. The Supreme Lord is the most nitpicky man in the Tianyuan continent. He's also the one who puts on airs the most. Forget about sleeping on a lady's bed, he's someone who'll throw away his belongings if a lady touched it. There are even rumors saying that the Supreme Lord either has problems with his private parts, or he is gay. And Feng's gaze on Yin Chujio became even more respectful. The Supreme Lord must have fallen for this dark dot skinned lass. I saw them hugging each other tightly. And when the Supreme Lord heard that this dark dot skinned lass died, he rushed over overnight. What did this mean? This says that the Supreme Lord cares about this dark dot skinned lass very much. Perhaps soon, this dark dot skinned lass will become a concubine for the Supreme Lord. Although her spiritual energy is too low and she can't be brought back to Tianyuan continent, the Supreme Lord can come over here, and we can also grab that chance to follow him along and come for a stroll. If the palace master and his wife know about this, they would be pleased. As An Fong thought about this, he went off to fill up the deep pit in a servile manner. Yun Chujio blinked. Did I say something incredible? Why are these two guards behaving so respectfully toward me? Yun Chujio was not worried about others learning of the ruckus over here. Individuals like the pretty boy definitely had divine arts that could allow them to insulate sounds. Filling up the deep pit was a difficult task for Yun Chujio, but it was just a piece of cake for An Fong, who had high spiritual energy. After just a while, he moved all the soil around the pit back to where they belonged. Yun Chujio looked at the sun and touched her belly. It was time for breakfast. She had to go to the main kitchen. Firstly, she wanted to eat her breakfast. Secondly, she would not cause any suspicion just because no one went over to get her breakfast. 
If her newfound grandfather found out that she hid a man in the house, he might become so angry that he will faint. Besides, this pretty boy was temperamental. It would be bad if he injured the people in the Yun family. Yun Chujio picked up a branch struck by lightning last night from the floor, walked into the house, and started to draw her eyebrows in front of a mirror. As a secret service agent in her previous life, putting on a disguise was something normal for her, so drawing eyebrows on her face was just a piece of cake for Yun Chujio. Soon, Yun Chujio had drawn a pair of eyebrows that looked exactly like her original eyebrows. She then removed the bamboo hat hanging on the wall, put it on her head, and walked out of the house. Chapter 44 Sooner or later, you'll belong to the Supreme Lord you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. I'll go collect breakfast. Both of you, make sure you guard the house well. Yun Chujio was highly skilled in making a fuss out of a casual remark. Once she became aware of the change in attitude within the two guards toward her, Yun Chujio put on a really good act of acting as their superior. Yes. Ninth young mistress, remember to bring our share too. And Feng said in an apple dot polishing tone. Yun Chujio agreed to his request and strode out the courtyard. Along the way, the people who met the ninth young mistress were puzzled as to why she put on a bamboo hat over her head. Yet, no one dared to ask, and they saw no strange behavior from her either. When Yun Chujio reached the main kitchen, she ordered the servants to pack two full boxes of food. Yun Chujio carried the food boxes and went back to her courtyard. Then, she called an Fong and an Yin over for breakfast. After breakfast, Yun Chujio put on an act of leaning against the rattan chair in a relaxed manner so that she could start digging for information. How should I call both of you? This humble servant is an Fong. This humble servant is an Yin. When Yun Chujio heard how these two people referred to themselves, she thought to herself. You're the pretty boy's servants, why are you referring to yourselves as, humble servants, in front of me? Yun Chujio went ahead and said, oh, come now, I don't deserve this. Both of you are masters in cultivation, how could you call yourself servants in front of a loser who cannot practice cultivation? And Fong tried to please her by saying, ninth young mistress, sooner or later, you'll belong to the Supreme Lord. You're our mistress, and we're your servants. So, it's only proper to address ourselves as servants in front of you. Yun Chujio was so shocked that she fell on her butt. Once she scrambled to her feet, she chuckled dryly, it's too early to say those things. The Supreme Lord has very high standards, and people like me might not even get noticed by him. And Fong suddenly raised his tone. Ninth young mistress, please don't look down on yourself. I can tell that the Supreme Lord is absolutely, completely, certainly, utterly satisfied with you. Or else, how could our Supreme Lord hug you when he's usually a clean freak, much less sleep on your bed? Yun Chujio just continued chuckling dryly without saying anything. That's a cosmic joke if I ever heard one. That pretty boy is just raring to kill me, and if it weren't for me shamelessly flattering him, I think I might have lost my life. Fancying me. He thinks I'm stupid, huh? But Yun Chujio was happy that these two guards had a misunderstanding. She switched the topic of conversation, and Fong, just now, you told your Supreme Lord that I'm not dead yet. What's that all about? And Fong blinked. He was not as stupid as to tell the truth. So he grinned and said, Our Supreme Lord suddenly felt a pain in his heart yesterday night, and he thought something happened to you so we rushed over that same night. I noticed there was nothing abnormal in the residence and went to inform the Supreme Lord. But, heh, I didn't expect that I'd get chased out by the Supreme Lord. Yun Chujio naturally did not believe in the nonsense and Fong just spouted away, but she had not expected Di Biming to send someone to protect her in secret, so she did not continue demanding answers. And Fong sighed in relief in his mind. It's not easy to trick this dark dot skinned lass. I need to be more careful later on. Ninth young mistress, what's wrong with your hair and eyebrows? And Fong pretended like he knew nothing. I accidentally got struck by lightning. 
Yun Chujio just whipped out a half dot truth. And Fong was cackling in amusement in his heart. Accidentally. Aren't you the one who went out of her way to attract lightning? But why did you go and attract lightning, anyway? Ninth young mistress, our supreme lord can get a hair dot growth pill for you. After dissolving it in water, wipe it on your head, and it can speed up hair growth. Once our supreme lord is awake, you can ask it from him. And Fong then thought. Supreme Lord, this is all I can help you with. I hope you can reduce my punishment because of this. Just as he expected, happiness bloomed on Yun Chujio's face. Is that true? If I use this hair dot growth pill, how long will it take before my hair grows, although it can't help you recover it to the point that it used to be, it can still help you gain an inch per day. Yun Chujio nodded. It's fine even if it's just an inch per day. It's better than being bald. Yun Chujio made up her mind. No matter what, she would absolutely get the hair dot growth pill from the pretty boy later on. Two hours later, D. Biming's voice traveled out lackadaisically from the room. Dark dot skin thing, I'm hungry. Chapter 45 Please help me, Prince Charming. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Chujio gnashed her teeth in secret. Excuse you. What does being hungry have anything to do with me? Am I your mom or dad? But while Yun Chujio thought gloomily in her heart, she said, Prince Charming, your breakfast is still warm, I'll bring it to you now. Yun Chujio felt that she would definitely go crazy if she continued acting like this. Yun Chujio carried a food box and went into the room in a servile manner. Luckily, the three people outside had only eaten the food in one food box in the morning, and, as it happened, she could just give this food box to Di Biming. Di Biming was leaning against the bedside lackadaisically, and he smiled a little when he saw Yun Chujio striding inside. Prince Charming, you're awake now. Why do you look even more charming after your sleep? Yun Chujio put on a fawning look. Di Biming had enjoyed Yun Chujio's great confession and hummed faintly. He moved in front of the table and ate his breakfast slowly. Yun Chujio put her hands under her chin and kept looking at Di Biming without blinking. Darn it! How could this pretty boy be so good looking? It's so unreasonable. I really wish I can draw a small tortoise on his face. Let's see whether he'll still look so pretty even after that. As Yun Chujio continued thinking, an enigmatic smile showed up on her face. Di Biming naturally noticed Yun Chujio's passionate gaze and felt proud. This dark dot skin thing must be deeply in love with me, or else she would not look so infatuated even when she looks at me eat. After Di Biming ate his meal, he coughed, and Yun Chujio snapped out of her sweet dream. Prince Charming, you finished eating. Yes. Prince Charming, let me give you a massage. Yun Chujio quickly tried to curry favor with Di Beijing when she remembered the hair dot growth pill and foam mentioned. Di Biming was stunned. He was still not used to having someone be so near to him. But he was not that averse to Yun Chujio's presence, and as if he were granting a special favor to Yun Chujio, he said, All right. Since you're so sincere, I'll allow you to do it. Yun Chujio felt like strangling this pretty boy who just loved to pretend to be cool. But unfortunately for her, she could only think about it. Yun Chujio ran behind Di Biming in a servile manner and started to seriously message Di Biming's shoulders. In the beginning, Di Biming's body was quite taut. But no one knew whether it was because Yun Chujio's skills were really good, or whether it was for some other reason. But Di Biming slowly relaxed, and he felt that the sensation of being massaged was actually pretty good. Even the dazzling sunlight shining from outside became pleasing to the eyes. Prince Charming, could you help me out a little? Yun Chujio finally let the cat out of the bag. Speak, said Di Biming faintly with his eyes closed. Well, isn't my hair all gone? I'm really a little ugly because of it and I know that you have a lot of methods up your sleeves, so could you help me get some pills that will promote hair growth? How did you lose your hair? D. 
Di Baiming did not agree nor disagree. Yun Chujio blinked, thought about things for a while, and decided to tell the truth. I mean, I'm useless when it comes to cultivation, right? But after being struck by lightning yesterday, I found out that I can absorb the power of lightning. So, I climbed up to the tree and wanted to absorb more. But I didn't expect myself to overdo it, so I ended up like this. D. Baiming's expression changed. What? Absorbing the power of lightning, D. Baiming thought about this for a moment. Then, an expression of realization appeared on his face. It's no wonder why I wasn't able to help clear the dark dot skin things blocked Meridian system last time. So, she has the rare lightning spirit root. Yun Chujio was a bit worried when she saw D. Baiming not speaking for a while, Prince Charming, is something wrong? D. Baiming had a thought appear in his head, and he solemnly said, yes. The cultivation of lightning spirit roots is different from the cultivation of other spirit roots. If no one guides you, it'll be very easy for you to go through qi deviation. Chapter 46 So, you're the culprit you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Chujio was someone who treasured her life greatly. When she heard Di Baiming say those words, she immediately shouted in surprise and fear. Ha! Huh. Is there such a saying? Who should I find to guide me? The people in Yi City don't even know about lightning spirit roots. Only the main four sects in the Qingxian continent have cultivation techniques for lightning spiritual roots. But, it's not easy to become one of their disciples, especially for someone stupid like you, Di Baiming said scornfully. Yun Chujio was so angry that she glared at him, and she used more strength in her hands. Yes, not bad. This is just nice. You used too little strength just now. Di Baiming said in satisfaction. Yun Chujio was so mad that she twitched, and she had a strong urge to kick Di Baiming. However, she put up with it in order to protect her own life. In truth, I can guide you a little, but I'm busy. Yun Chujio was a smart girl, and she immediately guessed what Di Baiming was trying to say. Prince Charming, I just know that you're capable of doing anything you want. I might be a little slow in the head, but I'm hardworking. Like they say, hard work can compensate for a lack of natural talent. If you can guide me, I'm willing to serve you faithfully. When Yun Chujio saw that Di Baiming was not talking, she decided to put in more effort and said, Prince Charming, think about it, if you train me well, I can strike down those people whom you hate with lightning. It'll be really cool. Di Baiming continued to remain silent. Prince Charming, once I complete my cultivation, I can bring forth lightning for your entertainment at night, and it'll be way classier than fireworks. Di Baiming felt his lips twitch. This dark dot skin thing sure has a unique thought process. Could it be because of the lightning spirit root? Prince Charming, please just give me a straight answer. If you're not willing to teach me, I will go and beg the main four sects until they let me in. Yun Chujio became a little anxious when she saw that Di Baiming was still not willing to express his stance on the matter. Humph, dark dot skin thing, how dare you? Do you actually think that I can't compare to those lousy people? Di Baiming scowled. Pretty boy, you're completely off your rockers. You didn't show give me an answer even after I said so many nice words, and now, you're blaming me. Yun Chujio may have been fuming, but she showed surprise and delight on her face. Prince Charming, are you saying that you'll be guiding me? Di Baiming hummed faintly. Continue massaging me. Yun Chujio had to tragically massage him for another hour before Di Baiming contemptuously said, Stop. Your skills are terrible, and my entire body feels horrible. Yun Chujio no longer had the strength to make a sarcastic quip. All her complaints were gathered into just one single sentence. Pretty boy, just you wait. Di Baiming's conscience may have felt a little guilty because he finally mentioned the main topic. Tell me how you absorb the lightning element, and I want details. Yun Chujio became excited, and she told him the general gist of her cultivation process. Di Baiming was shocked. 
While those with lightning spiritual roots could absorb the power of lightning, it was only limited to wandering lightning elements. He had never heard of anyone who could directly absorb lightning into their bodies like the dark dot skin thing. The power of lightning is incredibly wild. If someone absorbs too much of it, the best case would be that their Dantian region is destroyed, and the worst case is that they won't even be able to protect their own lives. Judging from what this dark dot skin thing said, she's absorbed four lightning bolts. How is that possible? While Di Biming was feeling very puzzled, Yun Chujio continued and said, Prince Charming, there is still another interesting situation. I found out that purple celestial lightning bolts chase after me, but the silver ones don't. Why is that? Di Biming suddenly remembered the moment he got struck by the purple celestial lightning in the monster forest. So, this dark dot skin thing is actually the culprit who caused me to suffer that accident. L.R.G. Yun Chujio suddenly felt her skin crawl, and she noticed Di Biming looking at her so angrily that it looked like he wanted to rip her to shreds. She was completely dumbfounded. Chapter 47 Your smile is really ugly you are listening at novel full dot audio. Dark dot skin thing, you caused me to be struck by celestial lightning. How do you think you should be sentenced? Di Biming stared at Yun Chujio eerily. Yun Chujio's head worked fast, and she quickly she understood the meat of the situation, so she spoke in a slightly shy tone, Prince Charming, this just shows that the heavens have determined that we share a fate together. If it wasn't for the celestial lightning, how would I have gotten to know you, Prince Charming? The celestial lightning is our matchmaker. However, she actually felt that her anger had been vented slightly. Serves you right. Why didn't the lightning kill you? Anyway, this may turn out to be a good method. Next time, if I have a similar chance, I'll hold this pretty boy and let the celestial lightning kill him. Di Biming had no idea that Yun Chujio was actually vying for his death. He carefully and deliberately thought Yun Chujio's words through, and he felt a strange feeling in his heart. It was as though there were small feathers gently brushing over it. Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Is my situation normal or not? When Yun Chujio saw that Di Biming was not speaking, she felt incredibly ill at ease. It was only then that Di Biming's mind returned to the present. Your situation is unheard of. Although a normal lightning spirit root can absorb the power of lightning, it is only limited to absorbing wandering lightning elements. The power of lightning is very wild. If it's absorbed directly, Best dot case scenario, it damages the Dantian region, but worst dot case scenario, the cultivator does not survive. But I'm still alive and kicking. Yun Chujio said, feeling puzzled. Well, your situation is relatively rare, and the purple celestial lightning usually strikes only when the cultivator is trying to get through a tribulation. Why would it chase after you? It's really strange. D. Biming furrowed his eyebrows. He did not like such situations, where things were out of his control, and he had a feeling that this dark dot skin thing would soon escape his grasp. BL.net Yun Chujio made a sarcastic quip in her mind. Humph, didn't you pretend to be all high and mighty and say that you'd guide me just now? Nonsense. So you don't know what's going on with me either. D. Biming glanced at Yun Chujio, and he instantly saw the disdain that fleeted in her eyes. D. Biming became livid. Dark dot skin thing, how dare you look down on me? Do you want to die? Yun Chujio shrank back in fear. What the heck? Does this pretty boy know how to read minds? Ah, Prince Charming, I did I didn't mean that. I was just scoffing at myself. Don't I just look like trash? If even you have never heard of this situation before, then I definitely have no hope in becoming a cultivator. Yun Chujio's words were full of loopholes, but Di Biming's mind was in disarray at the moment, so he did not think too much into it. He furrowed his eyebrows. Although your situation is a little special, it's only because the source of your spiritual energy is somewhat peculiar. I will have no problems guiding you. Okay. I believe you, 
Prince Charming. No matter what you say, I believe you. Yun Chujio shamelessly wore an infatuated look, fearing that Di Baiming would further pursue the previous matter. Di Baiming was currently eager to figure out the reason behind Yun Chujio's special physical constitution, so he stood up and walked away. Dark dot skin thing, I will go back and look up some information. I'll return and guide you in a few days' time. Holy cow! He's finally leaving. Hurry up and go away. Yun Chujio forced down the joy in her heart and pretended to look reluctant while she said, Prince Charming, you're leaving so soon. I can't quite bear seeing you leave. Yes. After Di Baiming heard what Yun Chujio said, he felt incredibly pleased. He stopped moving for a brief moment. I will have someone send you the hair dot growth pill you asked for. Yun Chujio showed a sincere smile on her face this time. Prince Charming. Thank you. You are such a good person. Di Baiming looked at Yun Chujio's little face, which lit up when she smiled, and his heart started to race. He scowled and barked, your smile is really ugly. Stop smiling at others in the future. Chapter 48 Not any ordinary bald head you are listening at novel full dot audio. Really ugly. Really ugly. Yun Chujio was thankful that her hair had all been burned off or else she would have definitely been so infuriated right then that her hair would probably start burning. This pretty boy's mouth is really foul. After Di Baiming finished speaking, he quickly went away with an phone and an ing. He looked as if he was fleeing after being defeated. Supreme Lord, is there something urgent going on in the palace? An phone asked curiously. Di Baiming glared at him fiercely. Why are you following me? Shouldn't you go back to protect that dark dot skin thing? And Fong hunched his shoulders. Supreme Lord, you can rest assured that I will protect the ninth young mistress and guarantee that she will not be hurt at all. And Fong, has your brain been functioning right lately? Do you need to go to 1000 feet lake to refresh your mind? D. Baiming calmed down and glanced at An Fong coldly. And Fong suddenly became alarmed. After he remembered what Di Baiming told him last time, he quickly said, Supreme Lord, I understand. If the ninth young mistress' life is not threatened, I will not take any action. Di Baiming scoffed coldly. Do not let this happen again. Once in phone watched Di Baiming leave into the distance, he wiped off his cold sweat and returned to the Yun family. Yun Chujio rested her chin on her hands and started to worry. I can say that the big tree in the courtyard was struck down by lightning, but what am I supposed to say about the door? After thinking for a while, Yun Chujio's eyes lit up, and she had an idea in her head. Yun Chujio unsealed Chun Yu's sleep acupuncture point, and the little girl shouted when she opened her eyes. Milady, are you okay? What happened? I heard a bang, and I lost consciousness after that. Ahem. A powerful person came here yesterday. Yun Chujio started to spout nonsense with a serious face. A powerful person. Milady, why did a powerful person come here? Why did he break our door? He didn't do anything to you, did he? Chun Yu looked worried. Not only did that powerful person not hurt me, but he also accepted me as a disciple. I'll be able to become a cultivator in the future. Yun Chujio said excitedly. Chun Yu had a simple personality, and she did not doubt Yun Chujio's words. Really? That's really great. Milady, where is your master? She said happily. Ahem. My master has an unsightly appearance and is unwilling to be seen by others. He left after guiding me a little. He will teach me again another day. Yun Chujio was getting better at lying. An phone was hiding in the dark, and the corners of his lips unwittingly twitched. This dark dot skinned lass is really good at spinning tails. Our Supreme Lord is so handsome that mortals and gods are envious of him. How could she say that he looks unsightly? Ninth young mistress, how could you say something like that without feeling guilty? 
After Yun Chujiu ate her lunch, she skipped out of her courtyard wearing a bamboo hat. Grandpa! Grandpa! Your granddaughter, Yang Jiu, is here to see you. Yun Chujiu yelled cheerfully outside Yun Xiaotian's study. Dot, come in. Yun Xiaotian's hearty voice came from the room. Yun Chujiu leaped into the room and grinned at Yun Xiaotian. Grandpa, I'm here to tell you a piece of great news. Great news. It's not raining outside, why are you wearing a bamboo hat? Yun Xiaotian asked in puzzlement. La la la. Grandpa, what do you think of my new hairstyle? Isn't it shiny? Yun Chujiu took off the bamboo hat swiftly. Yun Xiaotian jumped out of his seat in shock. He trembled as he pointed at Yun Chujiu. Ridiculous. You're being plain ridiculous right now. Are you going to be a nun? Grandfather, don't be angry. Calm down. Listen to my explanation. My bald head is not any ordinary bald head. This is a symbol of intelligence and wisdom. This is proof that I have become someone amazing in just one move. Yun Chujiu said with a grin. Chapter 49 My master is very ugly you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yun Xiaotian was so angry that he panted. Nonsense. This is just a bunch of nonsense. How can a girl be bald? You're just being ridiculous. Yun Chujiu bared her teeth. Grandpa, what I said holds more credibility than a black and white document. I can cultivate now. Black and white document. I won't believe you even if it's a gray document, and you said that you can cultiva. What? What did you say? You can cultivate now. Yun Xiaotian could not believe his ears. Of course it's true. Grandpa, I was struck by lightning in the courtyard yesterday. My hair and eyebrows were burned to crisp. Then, in the morning, a powerful person came to me and said that I have the rare lightning spirit root and wanted to be my master, Yun Chujiu said while she gestured wildly. Struck by lightning. A powerful person. Lightning spirit root. He wants to be your master. Yun Xiaotian felt that he could not make any sense out of Yun Chujiu's words. Yun Chujiu nodded, feeling incredibly pleased with herself. Yes, that's right, Grandpa. I will be able to cultivate from now on. I will strike down anyone who dares to bully the Yun family in the future. Yun Xiaotian was still having a hard time trying to believe her. Lightning Spirit Root I have never heard about it before. Grandpa, my master said that the lightning spirit root is rare. That is why so many people have not heard of it. Yun Chujiu pushed all responsibility onto her fake master. Although Yun Xiaotian still appeared doubtful, he was actually a great deal happier with the situation. Oh, that's good. Regardless of what the spirit root it is, as long as you can cultivate, it'll be good. Yun Jiu, where's your master? Please invite him over immediately. No, I'll go and thank him myself. Yun Chujiu hurriedly waved her hand. No, there's no need for that. My master is someone who keeps a low profile, and he is very ugly. He has a scar on his eye, a bulbous nose, and a toad. Like mouth. He doesn't want to meet people and has already left. Yun Chujiu was feeling really pleased with herself with all the lies she told. Pretty boy, didn't you say that I was ugly? Now, it's my turn. Humph, you are so ugly that you can't meet anyone. Young Jiu, stop this nonsense. You are not to go back on the teachings of respecting your master. How can you slander your master like that? Yun Xiaotian glared at Yun Chujiu. Yun Chujiu felt wronged. She never dared to scold the pretty boy in front of his face but when she badmouthed him behind his back, her newfound grandpa decided to nag her. Yun Chujiu pursed her lips. Got it. Yun Xiaotian asked for a little more details, but Yun Chujiu brushed him off with half-dot-truths. Grandpa, 
I know that I must be really conspicuous right now, so I'll work hard and practice cultivation in my courtyard over the next few days. Yun Chujio touched her bald head and said with a dry chuckle. Yun Xiaotian thought that Yun Chujio looked a little ugly too, so he nodded and agreed to her request. The grandfather and granddaughter pair chatted for a while. Then, Yun Chujio put on her bamboo hat and skipped out of the house. Yun Chujio met Butler Ji as soon as she walked out of the courtyard. She smiled and said, Butler Ji, I was just looking for you. Can you please make arrangements to fix two doors? As luck would have it, my doors were. You know, broken again. Butler G was stunned. Again. Hee <laughs> hee, just like the last time, they were reduced to bits. Yun Chujio felt that the doors in her residence were really unlucky. Butler G looked dumbfounded. Is there really a powerful person who is targeting the Yun family? Butler Ji agreed to her request with a few ambiguous words and slipped into Yun Xiaotian's study room as quickly as a rabbit. Yun Chujio blinked and shrugged. She then headed back to her courtyard. In the evening, Butler Ji asked someone to install the new doors. Butler Ji was now more respectful toward Yun Chujio. My goodness! The ninth young mistress master has actually managed to destroy the doors to this extent. The ninth young mistress will have a bright future ahead of her. However, Butler G wondered why the ninth young mistress master would want to break the door. Did he have some special hobby or something? As for a certain supreme lord who was suspected to have a special hobby, he was currently studying diligently in a library. Chapter 50 One T Egg You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. There were thick piles of jade slips on the ground and Di Biming's usual cold expression was full of irritation. Even after he looked through so many jade slips, he could not find anyone with a case that was the same as the dark dot skin thing. It was basically unheard of for anyone to be able to directly absorb the power of lightning. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that the dark dot skin thing possessed an unusual physical constitution. The lightning tribulation was the most feared tribulation among cultivators. Countless powerful people had been defeated by the lightning tribulation, but here was the dark dot skin thing, capable of directly absorbing it. It was so illogical that it was terrifying just hearing about it. D. Biming did not like the situation. Although he did not understand what kind of mentality he had, he felt extremely awful because the situation was out of his control. He spent the whole night in the library. The first reason was that he wanted to find an explanation for Yun Chujio's special body constitution. The second reason was that he wanted to find a suitable cultivation method for Yun Chujio. The next morning, Di Biming sighed. His eyes were red, and he was still unable to find anyone with the same situation as the dark dot skin thing. Fortunately, he finally found a slip containing skills that were suitable for the dark dot skin thing. D. Biming had carefully selected a cultivation technique called Thousand Illusion Lightning. It was suitable for those with lightning spirit roots, and there was no upper limit to the technique, which meant it was a technique that could be upgraded infinitely. An Ian, send this Thousand Illusion Lightning and Bottle of Hair. Growth pills to the dark. Skin thing. Yes, Supreme Lord. As An Ian was about to retreat, D. Biming added, tell that stupid thing that she must not let others know about her ability to directly absorb the power of lightning, or else she'll just end up attracting trouble. Also, get her to train well. If she can't reach the second level of spirit refinement realm after a month, I will show her no mercy. Yes, Supreme Lord. An Yin arrived at Yun Chujio's courtyard in the same evening. Yun Chujio was enjoying her dinner, and Chun Yu was startled by an Yin when he appeared abruptly. Just as she was about to call for help, Yun Chujio said with a smile, This is my master's servant. It was only then that Chun Yu calmed down, but she still looked at him curiously. Ninth young mistress, these are the hair. Growth pills and cultivation technique that the Supreme Lord asked me to deliver to you. An Yin respectfully gave the items to Yun Chujio. Yun Chujio took the items with a smile and said in her heart, at least there is something good about the pretty boy. 
he's someone who keeps his promises. Ninth Young Mistress, the Supreme Lord also wants me to tell you that you must not let others know about the fact that you can directly absorb the power of lightning in order to avoid drawing trouble to yourself, and Yin said solemnly. Yun Chujo nodded. Well, although the pretty boy is horrible, he still has some saving grace. Ninth Young Mistress, the Supreme Lord also said that if you are not able to reach the second level of spirit refinement realm after a month, he will show you no mercy, and Yin recited the biming statement word for word. All the feelings of gratitude that Yun Chujio felt toward the biming earlier instantly faded away. Bastard. It's impossible for me to reach the second level of spirit refinement realm in a month. The pretty boy is just trying to cause me trouble, a thought then bloomed in Yun Chujio's head. She glanced at her table and picked up a tea egg. Chun Yu, wrap this tea egg in oil paper. Yun Chujio took the wrapped tea eggs and handed them to Anin. Anin, take this tea egg to your Supreme Lord and tell him that this is from me. Anin felt his lips twitch. What does she mean by giving him a tea egg? The ninth young mistress is too stingy. It's the first time I've encountered someone giving tea eggs to my Supreme Lord. Although Anin was continuously making sarcastic quips in his heart, he went back with the tea egg. Milady, there are so many good things in our house, why did you give your master only one tea egg? Well, tea eggs are easy to carry, and they are nutritious. The gift itself may be small, but my expression of goodwill is great, Yun Chujo said while she suppressed her grin. Giving someone a tea egg is equal to asking a person to go away. Of course, it can also be understood as calling a person an idiot or a bastard. Welp, no matter what, it feels good to vent. The next morning, Anin saw D. Biming, and he respectfully handed the tea egg to him. Supreme Lord, this is a gift from the ninth young mistress.